Hey folks, Steve here. How you doing? Ah, bench, right? Bench, workbench. So this is my two plus year update. I built this thing, I think I reasoned it out, in the fall of 2019 uh, because I've had it around for a long time and I did not build it after COVID hit. It, would, it was already constructed. So I'm pretty sure fall of 2019, I was on the whole, I built the Ron Paul trailer thing for the summer of 2019. And I believe on that kick when I got back from this uh, that two month summer long project that this became my project to complement. This bench is built off of his kind of version two plans. Uh, it's really an amalgam of his version two plans for his uh, total station at the time. I borrowed the sawhorses from there. So the sawhorses are the total station stuff. And the rest of it was really the compact bench. So it's supposed to be three by six. Well, it's three feet wide, but I did make it seven long because I was really wanting that full eight foot surface to work off of four by eight. But having two sections and having to transport eight foot goods in my short trailer just wasn't working. And so I elected for thinking, well, if it's six foot, why not go seven? And if I go seven, I can still I can still haul it. And I have been able to six foot, seven foot. That doesn't make a difference. Eight foot wood. So this bench right here, the stats on it, three feet wide, seven, not six, seven feet long. All of this is laid out with Imperial. So I believe these are four inches on center or two inches as necessary. I drilled as many holes as I needed to, and then I drilled a few extra. They have been very, very good, these bench dog holes, for clamping. I use them a lot more than I actually use bench dogs at this point. It's really for clamping things down, getting right in there for that. I exclusively always, always use sacrificial strips for this bench. And so the bench itself is relatively unmarred, and I have not cut this bench yet. So I have been very pleased with sacrificial strips and the use of this. So the thing is 10, 10 inches wide, or 10 inches tall, I guess, and open inside for tools. I can fit a lot of tools in there, but you can't fit things like circular saws and stuff. I do have the spreader shelf that he uh, kind of aftermarket created for himself, and that helps me index my sawhorses to the exact perfect setting that they need. And then this just simply drops down onto those sawhorses, and then I have rounded holes that index into the hinges, which stand proud. Let me show you that. So here are the sawhorses, and I had his plans for his total station at the time. And so this would be his version two total station. And these are the sawhorses from that version two station because they have the material holder on both sides. And with the total station, you would want the material holder for trim because then you would take your trim, offload it, put it up on your miter box, do the cuts. And so there's that. So I really enjoy the material holder. And so I did those and I've been very, very happy with these. Uh, the other thing that I did was I created the spreader shelf, which was his kind of aftermarket part that he made for this because it indexes the sawhorses exactly to the width that they need to be for the bench to actually then sit down on them. What the bench does is it locks in. The bench locks in on these hinges, which are the hinges for the sawhorses, but the sawhorses have that hinge barrel proud. And so you route a slot and you index that down and then your bench aligns with your sawhorses every single time. And the spreader shelf, which indexes in those aftermarket add-on uh, pieces of plywood, and it's the same over there, in that that allows for the width to be exactly the same. So I'm indexing the same every single time and his spreader and uh, how convenient it was for actually setting the things up because that was a bit of a problem set the sawhorses up get this really heavy bench onto those sawhorses and then figure out how to move the sawhorses in or out so i love that spreader shelf for my system now i went ahead because I wanted this to be my table saw outfeed, I borrowed his either original plans for his very first bench or some other iteration, I think. And I went ahead and did this. I created the rail system. And so that's one inch uh, electric conduit with a, couple, with a couple of holes drilled in it and uh, bolts threaded through just to make sure that they have stops. And then I'm able to rest my table saw on those rails like so. So I just have a uh, plywood modification to uh, allow my table saw to rest on that. And when I'm not using the table saw, these rails push all the way back in and they stay literally inside the bench. This thing right here is meant to receive a router. So the router body would actually sit down below here and then you would have your router base up here. I never did route out the section for a router plate because I don't have a router plate. And the woodpecker plates at the time were very expensive and my resources are limited. And so I never did that. Um, I still could. However, I, I think I'm holding out because I don't do a lot of work with router tables anyway, so I can afford to hold out. I, I hand route a lot, but I can afford to hold out and wait until I get a total station. And in that total station, then I will create the hanger, you know, that, that 
add-on platform that actually has a router base on it. I'll do it then. One other thing I did with my bench is that I went to Home Depot and I bought a bunch of these bumpers that you can actually just screw on and I have them at all the corners. So one, two, three, four there at the corners. I have them on my sawhorses as well. They're all the way around the bench and the reason for that is because where I store my bench was either inside on my concrete floor in my walkout basement or I have actually had to tarp it and store it outside and I wanted to make sure that I did not have wood to concrete or wood to anything moisture contact and that keeps it at least about a quarter inch above anything and it really does help preserve the table and it also allows you to get your fingers under it if you actually have to pick it up if it's on its side or, or it's on, on its end. Uh, I did actually create the router slots uh, indexed to my particular table saw. I made them a little bit wider in case I uh, had a different table saw. I likely stick with DeWalt table saws and so that their, uh, their slide gauge slots are all the same then this table will continue to work for those. And again, an aftermarket thing uh, that Ron actually developed because he found picking up his bench is a little bit difficult is he created a handle in the middle of the bench on the top and bottom. And I do use that handle. That actually does make it a little bit easier to pick up and manipulate and maneuver around. It's an MFT table, a multi-function table with all of these bench dog holes. My bench, dogs, my bench dog holes are three quarters of an inch, I believe. And I laid them out with the Imperial system. And so I believe it's every four inches on center. And I did a pretty good job laying this stuff out. There may not be exactly perfect, and so I don't know if I would trust these things to create 90 degree angles for me everywhere on this bench because I did manually lay it out. I did manually drill everything, but they're pretty darn close and close enough for a lot of the things that I do, and I wouldn't rely on them to create my angles for me. I will do that with other tools that I have. The reason why this is a little bit darker, you can see that it's a little bit darker, especially if you get. So you can see that this is uh, really dark. Now, age is a little bit of it, but you notice the blonde plywood there, which is fresh probably spring of 2020, maybe fall of 2020, I realized that every once in a while I'd be working and I'd get weather, I wasn't paying attention, and all of a sudden it'd start raining. Well, of course, I'm grabbing tools and I'm putting tools away, covering things up. This bench is the last thing to get covered up if any, if I have a tarp. So I realized that this bench needed to be able to take some weather. And for that, I went ahead and bought some like marine varnish. And I went ahead and I'd love to have actually done this when it was all apart in pieces. But I varnished the whole thing with this marine varnish, sealed it all up so it can take weather, and it has. And I had a tarp on it at one point, not too long ago, not realizing the tarp leaked, like all tarps seem to do. <laughs> and I actually had standing water in the cavities. Uh, in all three cavities, I had standing water because it's kind of pointing downhill. And it sat that way for probably two, three days because I hadn't been out here thinking that it was protected. And I had no problems. So yay, go marine varnish. Yay. And with that, uh, in my future benches, I would also do that as well because they will be outside. I don't have the luxury of working in a lot of people's garages doing, you know, very high end or affluent. You know, it's just not not what I'm doing. So with that, I will actually treat them all as I make the parts, get them all sanded and all that stuff. And I will actually treat them before I put them all together. Oh, last thing. So those are all the pros to this bench. And I, I would build this bench again. If, if I didn't have one, but I knew what it did, I would build this. Uh, of course, right these days, I'd probably build the new bench, but there you go. However, my con, this bench weighs 100 pounds without the sawhorses. The pipes really don't add too much to it. So this bench, just because it's AC plywood, it's nothing special, and I did not have access to lightweight, it's 100 pounds. The top is three quarters, the bottom, is half inch, the sides are half inch, the inside spreaders are half inch, the rail guides are three quarter inch, and my ends are three quarter inch as well. You put that all together and it's almost two sheets of plywood, even with all the holes and everything, it's, it's almost two sheets of plywood. And so three quarters and a half inch sheet of plywood, you're getting about a hundred pounds. And this thing is heavy. And so it's non-trivial to set it up. I I set it up because I have it and it really, once it's set up, it's just a gold mine of, of just usefulness to have a bench like that. And I do the bench dogs, but more so I actually will use clamping. I use that a lot more for clamping than I do the bench dogs at this point. So when I get a, uh, when I get a source of lightweight plywood in the future, what I will do is I will 
sell this bench after I, after I make my other benches, I'll sell this bench to someone if they want it. And my plan would be to make his whole series of benches, uh, with, the with the accessories where you actually hang them off the bench and do all of that stuff. And I will make a total station at that time. I will make them mobile. So I will build the carts and I will build the transportation cart because by then most likely I will have a new trailer and I'll have a wider aisle. And when I have a wider aisle, I'll be able to take advantage of taking these to a job site in the trailer. Now, if I want this to go to a job site, it goes in the back of my truck. I might even, when I build a new bench, play around with, you know, maybe a 12 inch just for like a compact bench that's not going to do anything but maybe have a table saw hanging off of it in the cradle. In that uh, I might play around with a 12 inch height just to have the ability to put bigger tools in. Maybe I could find a tool in there that I really want to put in there and then build it to that. I don't know. Okay, well, there's the update to this tool bench. Love it. Love it. It's based off of Ron Polk's plans. Uh, I would call them version two. So this would be his Polk semi-compact workbench. And the plans are probably still available if you want to buy them for five, 10 bucks and download them. Uh, but anyway, what I did was uh, three feet wide, 10 inches deep. You can actually, uh, you have tool storage in here to keep your work surface clean because of course I think he's right on the money. A lot of people are on the money. If you just have a table, it's gonna get cluttered up with stuff. Hats, pencils, lumber, tools by making it a box as opposed to a table and tool storage and that keeps your work surface clear really cool so that is my bench that's the update uh hopefully i know this right now i'm seeing about 12 minutes on my screen there and i am hoping that i'm able to really crunch this down and just give you the nuts and the bolts but if you would uh, ask any questions, make any comments. Uh, and on my searches, sometimes the, you know, smaller channels just don't come up. So please, by all means, uh, you know, comment, do everything down there. And also, if you would, please like the video. And if you would, please subscribe. That would be great. I love to build the, the base of my uh, subscriptions. And so I can reach a wider range of people. That would be so cool. I, I love participating in this community of being a builder and a carpenter and a handyman and tools and all that stuff. I love contributing because I steal so many ideas from all of you. And so I want to be able to contribute to the conversation. So help me do that by subscribing and maybe sharing this video with someone who would like to see a goofball talk about a bench. That would be great. You know, yay. Everyone wins. <laughs> We're sent it to an enemy. <laughs> there you go. Punish somebody. <laughs> Either way, I hope you have a good one. Whatever your, whatever your gig is, I hope you have a good one. And I will see you in the next video. All right, thanks. Take care.